Thank you for watching this video. I wanted to put it together to share with anyone who's interested of what all is involved in planning and installing a solar panel system. I think the very first question somebody wants to have answered when they look at a solar system is how much did that cost? My system, which is 6.21 kilowatt, costs $23,799. And if you're looking at uh, per watt, $3.83. That included absolutely everything. I didn't pay a cent more for permitting, nothing. That was the entire package. I paid a third at contract signing, a third when the project began, and a third within 30 days of the project completion. There is a 30% federal tax credit, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit more information on that later. But that you get back when you file your taxes. You're going to need the full amount up front. This system is going to produce 7,452 kilowatt hours annually. Just based on what the current cost of my electricity is, it'll be less than 14 years payoff. There are other ways to calculate it where you figure the cost of electricity is going to increase over time. And if you Google this that I've told you on the slide, the ultimate guide to powering your home with solar, they actually come out with other ways for you to calculate it. They also give you some information showing that if you sell your house, you should recoup the entire cost of your solar panels. The monthly avoided utility expense for me is just under $100 a month. I've known I've wanted solar for about three years and I wasn't in the house I was going to stay in. So I was actually looking for a house that would be suitable for solar. So I looked for a house with a south facing roof and a fairly new roof. I was looking for an optimal 30 degree incline. I didn't want any shade on the roof area. And I knew that if needed, I was going to increase the attic and cross space insulation install mostly LED lighting and ensure that the air conditioning and furnace were very efficient. To get an idea of what size solar system you will, you need to take a look at your electric bill. Here's a, a section from my electric bill before I got the solar panels and during a month that I was using air conditioning. Although I gotta tell you, I'm pretty frugal on air conditioning. I keep it at 78 during the day and only at night do I take it down to about 75. But to calculate your maximum need, take a look at how many kilowatt hours were used. For me that was 637. So you figure 637 times 12, I got 7,644 kilowatt hours per year. Was the maximum I was going to need, unless of course I was going to add an electric vehicle, which I would love to, but uh, not needed at this time. I happened to still have the write-up on my house before I bought it, when it was listed for sale. And you can tell that uh, it was a recent roof, which is good. And they considered it pretty efficient even then because they advertised that their veteran budget billing was $225 a month. Since then I've added the insulation to the attic and the crawl space and used LED lighting, also just behaviors. I've, I've been doing it a long time so I, I really have cut my electric usage probably as much as I possibly can. Okay, using the calculation based on my maximum need, which would be my monthly times 12, which was 7,644, then divide that by 1,200 kilowatt per kilowatt hour. And what that is, that's basically how much a kilowatt hour solar system would produce per year. So using that calculation, I come up with a 6.37 kilowatt maximum solar system size that I would need. My system is actually 6.21 kilowatt, so that should be plenty for me. Uh, maybe even a little extra 
because that was based on my maximum sum of time usage. We'll see. What a lot of people do is, a, is they know they can't afford a solar system to cover all their needs, so they shoot for 50% of their current need with the intention of then cutting usage as time goes by. It's just, I cut my usage first. This is what my system looks like from the back of my house. On the left there is my cable box. In the center is the bi-directional meter that Veteran installed for me. And then below on, on the right is a box that Morton Solar put in. As you can see, the electric uh, had to run up from that box around my storm door. And then it actually snakes around and goes up into my attic space. And they did a really nice job of actually painting that conduit to match the siding of my house. This photo is a close-up on the bi-directional meter that Vectron put in. And I love it because this is it, it kind of works like an odometer when you have zero zero zeros. And when it is backward, then you get like nine 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 nine. So actually this value that you're seeing now, the nine nine six. That shows that I actually have produced, in less than a month, 320 more kilowatt hours of electricity than I've actually used. Of course, I put it in at a time when I'm really not needing air conditioning or heat, so I don't know that I will always have that much excess. But I figured I'll use that extra electricity to maybe use an electric space heater to help out my gas furnace during the winter. This photo just shows another picture of that conduit from the electric box on the right of the bi-directional meter going around my storm door and up into the attic space and how it's all painted nice. I just really appreciate the quality work that Morton Solar did. I, I think they did a great job. Uh, routing my electricity was pretty involved. They were actually had anywhere from two to four workmen here on eight days. In this photo you'll see those two pipes coming out from my garage and going up through my gutter. That's actually the conduit that they installed that goes from my monitoring system to up to my uh, solar panels. There again I think they did such a nice job and, and painting it to match my siding was very nice. This is a photo of the monitoring system inside my garage. Uh, it was great. I actually had a cabinet installed on the wall there and Morton Solar took down that cabinet for me and actually installed it for me in another area of the garage which I thought was awesome. Also all this equipment they could have easier stuck it on the back of my house where the brick was it would have been an easier install. They wouldn't have had to route so much electric through my roof areas, but I'm so glad they did it this way because I think it looks so much nicer. One of the things that you'll notice right in the center is an outlet and a switch. And actually that outlet will work when the grid is down and there's daylight out. So I may be the only person during a power outage that has electricity, which is pretty nifty. Here's as close a view as I can get of my panels. And one of the reasons my per kilowatt cost is probably a little higher than a lot of estimates is because I got the most powerful panels currently on the market. I got the SunPower 345 watt panel. And the reason is I know technology is going to improve so much that I wanted to get what was the best at this time. Plus that was the most power I could put in the smallest amount of space. But as you can see, they look kind of silver. Uh, that's because you really can't see the top of my panels from the ground. If someone wanted a cleaner look where they're all black, there's another pretty powerful sun power panel. I believe it's uh, instead of 345, it's maybe 325 or something like that. 
But I wanted to let you know you don't have to have those silver stripes if you don't want them. It can be totally black. Included in my system is online monitoring. It's a SendPower app. Just because the view looks better, this is from my iPad, but I can also use the same system, monitoring system, to check it from my phone. It'll show me not only how much electricity I'm producing that day, but my lifetime carbon dioxide emissions avoided, which is pretty cool. Uh, one thing I've noticed, as you can see in this picture on the right, the solar produced was 25 kilowatt hour, and that was for a day. And that's each bar represents an hour. Hour on a really cloudy day, I I may only produce four kilowatt hour, and then on a really nice setting day, I can produce like 36 kilowatt hour. So it really does vary based on the weather. It was tough for me to pull that money out and part with it to put the solar system on my house. I gotta say, if Veteran actually offered utility solar that I could have purchased, I may have been tempted to do that. But with my belief about climate change, I really didn't have a choice. But it helped to make my decision a little bit easier to swallow when I looked at how my savings would have performed if I had it in the stock market. Year to date at the time I had done it, I actually would have lost money in the stock market. Another way of taking a look at uh, whether or not I made a good financial decision also uh, was to take a look at the returns on more, more safe investments. So taking a look at uh, where your safe money could go and how much you could earn, here is the table I pulled up. And if you look at a 20-year CD, fairly safe, you could earn 3% annual. Okay, so consider you could put your money someplace safe and get a 3% return. Now the net cost of my investment in solar panels was $16,659.10. Now if I had that much money put in and was making a 3% return, my monthly interest would be $41.65, but that would be before tax, so it would actually be less than that after tax. But then compare, instead of putting that $16,000 in an investment, I put it on solar panels then that's going to be an avoided cost of $99 a month on electricity. And also there's a program called SREX and Morton Solar helped me get signed up on that. And right now those SREX pay about $17 for uh, 1,000 kilowatts, kilowatt hours. Uh, so that's about an extra $10 a month. So $40 versus $110 that sounds like a good plan to me. I think it was a good financial investment too, even though I did it for climate reasons, climate reasons. I wanted to let you know something about the tax credit. That tax credit, you won't automatically get back the full 30% of your solar system cost. You have to have that much tax liability. Now, in my particular case, I just finished the calculations. I'm probably going to only owe about $5,000 in federal taxes in 2015. So I am very glad I got it done this year because what I can do is I can erase my total fe uh, federal tax liability in 2015 with this credit, but then I'll still have an extra $2,000 to apply to my 2016 federal taxes. The 30% tax credit really only goes through the end of 2016. So I know for sure I can get credit for that leftover tax credit next year. I'm not really sure if I would be able to do that if it extended into 2017. So in this case, it really paid for me to go ahead and get it done in 2015 and not wait. So that might be something you want to consider. Okay, another thing 
there there are all these calculations of how you're going to save money but I want to be totally transparent and make sure you know the possible threats also. Last year uh, the utility companies were trying really hard to kill net metering. Net metering is where the utility with the bi-direction uh, meter keeps track of all the electricity you used, you produced but didn't use and then you get to use it at a later date. It's kind of acting like a battery for you. And really the only thing you're paying on that right now is that $11 a month service charge. Um, if they succeed in killing net metering, you could end up paying more. And I really can't tell you for sure they won't kill net metering. I know when they attempted it before, anyone who already had net metering were going to be grandfathered in and they were going to get to keep it. Another threat is a large fixed charge. Right now we have $11 fixed charge and then you have the variable rate based on how much you use. Vectrin is trying really hard to actually get it up to the point where your fixed charge is about 70% of your bill and only about 30% of your bill is going to be based on the electricity you use. They want to do it that way because they want to keep people on the hook paying for those coal plants. I, I am totally on board with helping pay for the grid when that means the transmissions, but I do not want to pay for their coal plants. I will go buy batteries before I pay that. Anyway, we need to keep fighting that. It's not there yet, but you need to be aware of that risk. Now what can you do to fight veterans war on solar? One organization that's doing a great job is Citizens Action Coalition. They're based in Indianapolis. Google them, support them. They're doing a great job looking out for us. The other is Evansville has a Sierra Club Beyond Coal campaign. Uh, you can get in t contact with them. They will keep you updated on what you can do to help support renewables in the Evansville area. Also, whenever you vote, ask for the people you're ask that the people you are voting for support renewables. Thank you so much. I hope you go solar. I want everyone that can go solar to go solar. Thank you.